Hi, this is Frederick van Amstel. I am from PUC PR and I'm gonna present prototyping games and apps with LEGO. LEGO is very interesting to bridge the abstraction gap we have now currently in our world. Software is increasingly being used as an infrastructure to understand and live in a digital world. However, software relies on abstractions that somehow make us our world more distant from our existence. So we do not understand sometimes what's going on with our physical world and also with our social and emotional world that software is now infrastructuring. This is an insight I got from a book called This Stack, written by Jim Bratton, that shows software as an abstraction and a, a, a means for intervening with the world in different ways. Some people may understand a different abstraction plane, but another person might not understand the same plane and may understand another plane. And these people get might get confused and it might be very difficult to talk about the same world if people are living in those different abstraction planes. Hence, I'm going to show you an example that abstraction is uh, re um, it is um, relative to the person and experience the person has of the world. In this picture, you see a bunch of lines. You may see uh, some colors. You might see chaos, but you also may see uh, a painting from a famous painter called uh, Pollock. If you have the experience of knowing the works of Pollock, you understand what this picture is about. So this is, picture is not abstract, it is concrete for you. But for many people that do not understand the history of Pollock and what he was trying to show in this picture, they might feel like this big painting is abstract. And that's how this um, picture and a whole bunch of other pictures that follow the same style were lab labeled in their art uh, history as abstractionism. However, Pollock himself never wanted to mean any abstract uh, concept through his paintings. He really wanted to draw attention to the most concrete part of painting, which is the actual paint. So here you see a painting that puts into the foreground the materiality of painting itself. So while you are looking at this painting, Pollock wants you to look at the paint itself and see how the strokes of paints create this beautiful pattern in the canvas. So here is the point. Abstraction depends on your previous experience and what is abstract to one person might be very concrete to another person who have already experienced that thing in a very deep way. This conversation is going towards the object of our discussion, which are applications in mobile platforms. Those applications are hard to build because they depend on different abstraction layers. And each of these layers have their own complexity levels. And people working teams building those mobile applications, they have completely different experiences with those layers. Therefore, they might have get into a very difficult uh, situation while trying to communicate about decisions that cut across those different levels. Many uh, decisions that are um, uh, being shown in one of these layers depends on the decisions uh, that are not some, sometimes not visible into, um, in other uh, abstraction layers. Therefore, people might get lost while discussing uh, what they want to build with their app because of this abstraction gap. This is particularly common in challenge-based learning environments while uh, the learners are engaging with a topic and discuss what's going to be their big idea, essential question and challenge. In this phase, students, they, they have uh, a lot of miscommunication due to talking about the same things or different things in different abstraction layers that not everybody understands. So LEGO will help us to bridge the gap and improves communication in these teams. As you probably know, LEGO is a toy system that lets children learn dealing with abstractions and using them to materialize their ideas. 
Lego is not just a normal toy, it is a system based on abstractions as well. However, those abstractions are put into the children in a very concrete way, not only through the system of stacking pieces, but also through the systems of building things through the instruction manual and so forth. Lego has also its advanced form in the shape of Lego Mindstorms, which is a special kit built with Lego pieces and special blocks that have some uh, information technology functionality and enables uh, students and learners to program robots and other kinds of automation. And this Lego Mindstorm kit is widely used to learn programming concepts through physical representation in robots and other kinds of automated things. So Lego has already been used to bridge the gap in between abstraction and concreteness in learning programming. And my question is, can you use Lego to support collaborative design in mobile, mobile app development and bridge the gap also in the, this process? I imagine that Lego can help people physically ground their ideas and their concepts while they are discussing their mobile app uh, projects. And people might have different ideas about the same thing, but once they start building the model, the Lego model, they start to see that they are talking about the same thing or they are talking about different things because the Lego part of the discussion is very concrete and physically grounded to something in the world, in the shared world, in objective sense that people can relate to. And those divergences in, their, in different ways of thinking that a group might have are somehow visualized and materialized through the Lego pieces, disposition, the stories that people tell about those Lego pieces and the systems of concepts that they build on top of these uh, Lego pieces. For example, Lego Serious Play is a technique for communication and ideation and knowledge exchange that uses Lego pieces to represent ideas in a metaphorical way. For example, stairs can represent uh, growing, can represent evolution, learning, and many other different concepts that are not directly related to uh, stairs. And in particular, in challenge-based learning, Lego Serious Play is a very interesting technique to help uh, a group of people to move from having little ideas to having a big idea that everybody can agree upon and work towards developing a challenge. Lego Serious Play is not the only uh, technique of communicating and prototyping with Lego, but it is the most widely known technique. I personally like to use a lot Lego video scenarios to richly present big idea, essential questions and challenge, telling a story using Lego as puppets and scenarios and um, different objects. So you create a whole story, so you record it using your smartphone and then people might understand what you really mean and what is the death of your big idea. This is quite quick to produce and the materials are readily available and quite, it's quite cheaper, much cheaper than actually producing a video using other means such as actors or uh, animations or slides or so on and so on. Uh, Lego video scenarios are really quick and cheap to produce. Lego prototypes are actually video recording of Lego pieces but with the intention of testing out uh, mechanics, uh, game mechanics or um, some kind of interactions. It's not, not need to be necessarily games but in the game field you can see the usefulness of this approach. For example, in this picture you see a prototype of mechanics for uh, an RPG battle interface where the three characters on the right are attacking the 
four characters on the left, three characters on the right are player controlled characters, the left side uh, computer controlled non playable characters. And on the top of the heads, you can see the health points of each of these characters and how the heroes controlled by the players might use that information to decide who's go they're gonna attack first and second and so on. So the strategy of attacking players, uh, the known controllable players, is shaped by the way you see the information on the interface. And that's what the developers wanted to test. So how the users and players will react to this interface in this particular specific decision point. The interface has a lot more mechanics, but they just built a simple prototype to test this just one mechanics. So how players will use the also the positioning of their characters and the positioning of the non-playable characters that can be affected through a, a high hit. For example, you can throw up um, a character together and then later on hit two characters at once using a different a new kind of me game mechanics that are not common in rpg battle modes and you can see these mechanics working in this video scenario that has been recorded much later in the process so you can see a character is hitting uh, an enemy and uh, the enemy is now together and then they can want only see one single hit uh, attack two enemies at once this is the uh, innovative uh, mechanics of their game and they built and they created and tested the first version of these mechanics using LEGO. This second prototype I'm showing here was developed many many months later so it took a lot of time for them to program this interaction and test it out and imagine if they haven't built the LEGO prototype uh, version before and they had a lot of questions on how this mechanic is going to work they would have a hard time to make those decisions in this phase of the project. So LEGO really saved a lot of time for them when deciding what's going to happen in this uh, RPG battle mode they created. I'm going to show now a different way of prototype LEGO that uses a higher level of abstraction drawn from the LEGO modeling from the United Modeling Language, actually, UML. So we are developing at PUC PR a new version of UML, a concrete version of UML that can be used for collaborative teams uh, called LEGO Modeling Language. In this picture, you see a class diagram that also has some features from uh, use case diagrams, but basically it is a class diagram describing a game where you have some entities and you have some properties of those entities represented physically and also textually through these uh, post-its. This seems a little bit childish, but it's very useful for teams that are not yet uh, decided on what's going to be their software modeling and they want to define that and decide that together in, with their whole team and not just by one single person. Here you see another UML um, formalism called sequence diagram displayed through a video with Lego pieces. It reveals the interactions of different actors that are involved with the software, but through a story. And this story is much easier to understand, much clearer than actually looking at uh, the sequence diagram. Of course, later on, the sequence diagram traditionally from UML can be built but the point of making a video is to getting all the stakeholders on agreeing upon these interactions. Another example of using LEGO to and probably the most useful application of LEGO for modeling software is the use case diagram. This is a subject for much debate in requirements engineering. What's going to be what are going to be the user cases? And instead of just writing down, discussing, talking, by talking, you can actually build the use cases and uh, simulate what's going to be the requirements for each of those cases. 
So you can discuss much more productively if you have physical representations of the cases and people can change quickly the connections from one actor to another actor, for example, and test it out what's going to happen. Use case diagram, this particular one I shown, was built after a interface sketch was drawn to check if there was any missing features uh, from the, the sketch. We, the sketch should have been done after the use case diagram, but anyhow, the use case diagram also helped with the evaluation of the sketch. And of course, we saw a lot of features that were missing from the sketch and had to be included afterwards. So I have shown a lot of examples with uh, using how to use Lego for prototyping games and apps. There's definitely more ways of using Lego for that. And I'm going to point you towards uh, the work of St Professor Stan Kurkowski. He has taught a lot of students on how to use Lego for software engineering classes. And he has this amazing website where you can see the videos, see the assignments, where he teaches um, software engineer through legal techniques. It's not exactly uh, meant for software production, really. It's more like for learning software engineering concepts. But I can get a lot of inspiration from his work, and we can really adapt this, I believe, for uh, produce, producing software. All right, that was my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.